Victor and myself, but I'm going to begin with just uh, to reassure everybody that there is a rationale behind engaging in the recruitment for Amazon in the first place. And it's really to solve a key uh, problem and also to further our community's already existing plans, the plans that have been here pre-Amazon. First, you know, we all know, and you all as, as commissioners who advise the county board, you know of the compact and the perspective that has informed growth in the county over the last quarter century or more, where we take our two transit corridors, uh, both in North Arlington and South Arlington, we concentrate the land in and around metro stations towards being developed at its highest and best use so that we can do a couple of things. One, maximize that transit investment and then accommodate thousands of th and thousands of uh, residents as well as employees. And this has been quite successful. Uh, our commercial corridors together uh, provide about as much space as many principal downtowns in major American cities. Denver, Colorado, Los Angeles. I mean, those are some big cities, yeah. far bigger than our 26 square miles in Arlington. Absolutely. So we've been quite successful in making sure that we can you know, accommodate our share of the region's growth in daytime population, as well as the population that sleeps here in a way that doesn't necessarily cause sprawling growth throughout the county. So with that is the fundamental economic paradigm. We have a very real reality that emerged during the uh, 2010s, where a significant number of the daytime population was occupied by federal government office workers. And because of decisions by the federal government, the Base Realignment and Closure Commission, as well as uh, some other job losses with the uh, moving of the Patent Trademark op Office, uh, among others, sequestration. sequestration, the Great Recession. We've had compounding issues that have caused uh, nearly 25,000 jobs to be lost in the Crystal City area alone. And with that, that represents the significant portion of the 34,000 jobs that left Arlington overall. So that's the hole. That's the hole that exists in Crystal City and uh, nearby Pentagon City. And into that hole emerges a, an effort by Amazon to seek a sec, second corporate headquarters about 18 months ago, Victor? About 18 months ago. But you should maybe talk yeah, about please. the- um, You the talk about yeah, it. Well, the consequences of, of these vacancies. Yeah. Um, they caused us to lose revenue. Um, mm -hmm. We lose about uh, 3.4 uh, million, million per one percentage of, uh, of vacancy. And vacancy shot up 10 points in three and a half years, um, which is $34 million a year. So what we've been trying to do is obviously balance the budget back. And how do you do that? Fill up that office space, um, get those rents to move back up mm -hmm. and, um, and, and fill that hole. And so, you know, we have a plan as Arlington loves to do a plan to deal with these uh, existential economic factors. However, the plan uh, that was consummated around 2012 for Crystal City is really predicated on restoring the number of daytime workers, Absolutely. the number of employees. Absolutely. The plan only would work if the value that would be created by that economic activity could be realized. Otherwise, that plan is a nice document, but wholly divorced from reality. So into that sort of uh, backdrop comes the Amazon recruitment that, uh, that, or, or a request for proposals that we responded to and uh, thanks to the great work of Victor and his team, we emerged successful as one of the uh, two HQ2 recipients. And now I guess the only HQ2 recipient. 238. <laughs> That's a number you'll never forget never for the rest forget. of your life, right? Yeah. So we have uh, Amazon that's now planning on uh, building a significant presence in Arlington, uh, in Crystal City, in Pentagon City. Uh, to, to bring at least 25,000 jobs over the next dozen years. And uh, potentially there are incentives that will uh, further encourage their growth up to 38, that 37,850 jobs over the course of 16 years. What that translates into in, in terms of buildable square footage, uh, they're planning on at least 4 million square feet in the initial decade of build out. 
they can go up to over 6,000 square feet over the uh, the full 15 years of, of build out. So this is pretty substantial, but you should recognize that this is not overwhelming because in the Crystal City area alone, we have 2 million square feet of, of vacant office space, 8 million square feet vacant total. But in Crystal City alone, 2 million is vacant. And in the Crystal City and Pentagon City area where Amazon is gonna be locating, we have uh, plans for the addition of over 21 million square feet of office space. So Amazon is going to be a small fraction of the plan capacity for these areas. So when it comes to whether or not the density is consistent with our uh, plans, the answer is an absolute yes. When it comes to can the infrastructure accommodate it, as you can see, the primary way in which this is all going to work is through having a robust transit network, and we are significantly under capacity. The peak uh, experience of ridership on Metro, uh, as well as our local bus system, ART, and as well as Metro bus. And we also have additional transit capacity that didn't exist in the middle 2000s, which uh, with extensive uh, bus rapid transit connections to the city of Alexandria. So Amazon fits. Amazon actually fits quite well. Uh, so we don't have any real concerns about whether or not the 25,000 jobs phased in over a decade or more will be something uh, that that works for us. However, it doesn't mean that it doesn't come without other uh, thoughts and consequences. But I do want to spend a, a bit more about the business case for Amazon in the first place. Um, so one more thing, we talked about the federal jobs and you should also recognize that even though we don't necessarily have great projections on this, um, the 25,000 jobs that Amazon will bring will produce some economic activity that we can't quite predict yet. There will be other uh, demand for companies to locate in and around Amazon, which should, should further reduce our vacancy rates. Uh, but then there's also the opportunities that will be available for small businesses who will now have substantial numbers of uh, daytime employees who may become customers for their goods and services. So the economic activity that this will help produce is something that will pay uh, significant dividends, particularly for Arlington residential taxpayers who have been uh, significantly stressed with this high rate of vacancy and having to shoulder a higher load of uh, spending uh, for for what makes Arlington special than we would otherwise like. Part of the the deal for Arlington being a successful community is we that we have the commercial sector pulling its weight. And uh, not to be dismissive or pejorative, but it's been a drag for a little while. Yeah, yes, and yes. that's going to change. We have a couple of questions actually in the chat box. If you guys wouldn't mind taking one from. Uh, from James Ruff wants to know if the advertised 25,000 jobs earmarked for area residents, are these area residents that will get those jobs or are those people transferring into Arlington? Mm -hmm. So the, the 25,000 um, employees that will be working at the Amazon headquarters will come from throughout the region. Um, there's actually a, a study that was done by Fuller um, um, at, from George Mason University, Fuller Institute, and they show the distribution of these jobs uh, throughout the region. About 16 percent of those 16 to 20 percent of those jobs will actually be people that live in Arlington and work in Arlington. And that's pretty typical for what we have for all of our companies here. Um, then in um, actually Fairfax County, 33 percent. Um, they're, they're estimating about 33% of the people will come from Fairfax County. Um, and then about 15% from DC, about 6% from Prince George's County. But in other words, they're spread throughout the region. Now, some of those people may already be in the region living and residing. Some of them may already be in Arlington living and residing. And then some will come from outside of the region. Um, that coming from outside of the region is, is really a good thing for us right now because we've lost a lot of young talent uh, to other areas around the country. So we've, we're viewing this as an opportunity to really attract that talent back back to the region. Um, there's another question about if relative to the uh, sector plans and community plans, if um, you know anyone's ever asked Amazon or other businesses to contribute financially towards park spaces um, in these sector plans? Sure, that's a great, uh, great question. And one of our principal public policies is to take growth in 
tax revenue that comes from redevelopment in Crystal City and to invest it back in Crystal City. Uh, the details you don't need to know, but we have a tax increment financing district in the area that Amazon will occupy. And as long as there's growth in revenue, we dedicate a percentage of that back to investments in the community to, be to benefit the broader community. And hold that thought because we're going to be referring to the uh, TIF a little bit later on when we describe the particular performance agreement. But part of what Arlington has done well is to recognize that intense redevelopment brings with it needs for open space and other amenities for the surrounding community. And we've created a self-perpetuating mechanism to ensure that those budget needs don't get supplanted by other budget priorities. Now, we have a couple merging questions here building on the 25,000 jobs. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about the secondary gains of, you know, what will happen, it's unknown, but how people, how small businesses will benefit from oh. recruiting talent. And also uh, clarification, if you're saying that the new jobs for Arlington residents will be 16% of the overall 25,000. Somewhere between 16 and 20% of the overall 25,000. Um, to, to dovetail to the, uh, the small business question, so they've done some studies around the country. Uh, half of these workers will be tech workers. They, they all will be high wage workers, 150,000 average salary. With those wages, um, those jobs actually support about um, four more jobs in the service sector, the small business service sector, restaurants, dry cleaners, legal, you know, um, you know, daycare, all the things that we need in order to operate, you know, as as people in work. Um, so the bottom line is that small businesses that are there right now that have survived will probably flourish quite a bit, um, and there will be quite a few new uh, businesses. Um, we're anticipating a lot more retail, um, a lot more exciting retail, and there's already great retail there, but it's not on the streets. Um, and this retail will be really, you know, storefront retail in the first 20 feet of the building, um, making it a more exciting, dynamic environment. Some of that money will be spent. Uh, you mentioned the tax increment financing. Some of that will be spent to widen sidewalks, to create parks. Um, you know, the bottom line is it will be a much more vibrant, exciting community um, that we've all grown to love. Like, I mean, I know when I'm in Roslyn these days, I feel like I'm in the middle of New York. It is really cool. Central Plaza is an example of a public investment that the board was able to negotiate, you know, when they when when um, Roslyn was under redevelopment. So all these things will come, um, but, but they're all very exciting. So I think um, we're ready for the next section. All right. So we're going to get into uh, looking at the investments that are a part of this. And this is really uh, a unique element of what our staff was able to accomplish in Arlington. So, Victor, I'm going to prepare prepare you to walk us through it. But just from the, the, the macro standpoint, when it comes to corporate uh, relocations or attracting corporate clients, you'll hear a lot of different things that different communities done and have done. And you'll also hear uh, really significant sums of money attached to those corporate relocations. Um, and communities that have done it poorly have given away cash that were uh, re generated for other purposes and, and use them to encourage corporations to come, sometimes limiting their ability to provide for the needs of people who already exist there. So with that experience as a clear roadmap as to what we were not going to do, um, Arlington worked with the Commonwealth of Virginia and the incentive packages that were that was negotiated uh, kind of sets a model for how communities should do it. And Victor, why don't you walk us through how it works? Sure, sure. The, the first thing that we did was we really worked with the state to set priorities. Um, and it was very clear that and I'm going to go from state perspective first and then come local. Um, that what was needed for Amazon and really not just Amazon, but really for the state of Virginia, what was needed was a talent pipeline. We have a lot of great talent in this region, a lot of great technical talent in this region. But that, but for the future, um, for all of our businesses in this region, um, the demand is extreme for um, data analytics, for artificial intelligence, for um, um, software design. These careers, um, we really haven't been producing enough of them. So we worked with the state to set up the priority to really invest in education. So there is a billion dollars that's going to be invested in education um, to double the number of degree, talent degrees that are out there um, um, in our workforce, that will be in our workforce over the next uh, 20 years. And 
in addition to that, the state did put together um, a direct offer of, of cash incentive to Amazon, which is about 30 or 40 times larger than ours. <laughs> and rightly so, it's the state of Virginia. Um, they're investing about uh, 750 million in total for 37,850 jobs. Locally, what we did is we really concentrated on really investing the majority of, of the dollars in our public infrastructure, in our affordable housing, um, and other strategic investments. Uh, specifically, um, between us and Arlington County, I'm, I'm sorry, Alexandria, we're investing about $570 million, um, in transportation. And then um, together with Alexandria, um, $150 million in housing. In addition to $150 million in housing, um, we are working, we're going to work using our tax increment fund um, financing. We're going to work w and do strategic investments for infrastructures that really complement um, the, the experience opportunities that are really in um, um, really developing in Crystal City right now. In other words, trying to knit the community together more, bringing down some of the um, berms on Route 1 to make it more pedestrian friendly. And then um, the $23 million investment that's going directly to the company is only about 90, it's only about 5% of the, of the pie. All right. So that's a little different than what we typically get, but we should probably pause here because Maybe I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Yeah, let's talk about the TOT, which is the big thing that's going to be at the board is going to be considering this weekend. So as you may have heard, uh, there is a, a value a, attached to this incentive of about $23 million. But it's important to recognize that this is not a cash grant to Amazon. It is something that must be earned and reflects only 3% uh, of the total incentive that we are attaching to Amazon and Arlington. As you can see, 97% of it is us investing in ourselves. Uh, the remainder is invested in Amazon, but in a way that's unique in the sphere of um, providing economic incentives. So one of the presumptions of having Amazon in Arlington is that there will be growth in the number of hotel or room nights that are uh, used in Arlington as a result of Amazon being here. If that is realized and that produces growth in what is our transient occupancy tax, a tax that is paid largely by non-Arlingtonians who are staying in Arlington's lodging facilities or I guess newly Airbnbs, um, people who pay that tax <clears throat> uh, will be subject if it grows to being the base of the incentive that is provided to Amazon. But there's a couple of key important caveats. The only way Amazon will be eligible to earn this grant is if they actually reach their performance targets that are outlined in the agreement that the board is considering this weekend. So we gave you that $4 million uh, 10 year square footage build out and the 6 million square footage build out over 15 years. So if Amazon uh, meets annual growth targets that are outlined with that level of, of overall growth, they will be eligible to the incentive based on how close they get to the number. So. For the sake of this agreement, we've assumed that if Amazon does 90% of the growth target, they will be eligible for the full incentive. If they do less than 90%, but more than 50%, they get a prorated amount of the uh, incentive. If they do less than 50%, they get none, zero. So it's a performance incentive that requires that Amazon actually um, – build the amount of square footage and occupy the amount of square footage in the agreement. Now, if that precondition is met, the next precondition is that there actually be growth in the transient occupancy tax. And that's how we calculate the incentive. The level of growth in the tax that's calculated from a pre-Amazon baseline, Amazon would be eligible for up to 15%. And Arlington County would, of course, retain the remaining 85 percent. <laughs> so as we calculate that incentive based on uh, a, a presumed amount of growth in the TOT, that would come to twenty three million dollars over the course of 15 years. But that's twenty three million dollars over 15 years for Amazon. 
nearly $130 million in additional revenue available to Arlington that would not be realized were it not for Amazon's investment in the community. We have a couple of questions in the chat room about transportation and the TOT. We'll just start with um, people are interested in kind of touch a little bit on this, but what's the plan for connections between Crystal City and Columbia Pike and also where the new metro stop location might be? You want to start? Well, oh, you're I'll metro, start. man. All right. So, metro. <laughs> so there is going to be a, a new metro station entrance that's going to be attached to the Crystal City station. So currently the metro station entrance is uh, on 18th Street, closer to Route 1. This will be bringing it further down 18th Street so that it's on Crystal Drive, which would make for a much better connection to people who are commuting in on VRE, as well as the commercial district in Crystal City. Uh, that one uh, additional station entrance will likely encourage thousands more trips on Metro. Then in nearby Alexandria, uh, they had plans and they, they were in the process of uh, building a Potomac Yard Metro station, but due to cost, they had to sacrifice a south entrance to the station these incentives will allow that to be built, which will provide a great opportunity for uh, people in Alexandria to connect via transit to easily access Arlington, as well as the uh, area that Amazon will be occupying. And in terms of the connection to Columbia Pike, um, there's bus ra rapid transit. So the bus rapid transit currently comes from Alexandria and reaches the lower parts of Crystal City. What's going to happen is this is going to be built out all the way out to Columbia Pike, which is really will change the actually the feel of that entire area. It will knit it all together. Excellent. We also have a question from both Kevin Yam and Tinley Peterson. They want to know if there is a cap on the TOT benefit payable to Amazon. The answer is yes. There is. Yeah, roughly. I mean, but this number here at 23 million, that's pretty much it. But there's if the TOT grows beyond that, they, their 15 percent increment will grow with it. Yes. So 15 yeah. percent is the cap. I'm sorry. Right. So what will happen uh, with that question, Kevin, the TOT could, in fact, grow higher than that. But Arlington's increment would grow higher as well. Amazon would never be eligible for an, a right. figure higher than 15 percent. And Kevin also has a follow-up question. He says it appears that the TOT and incremental TIF incentive is only tied to occupied square footage. Is there any required reporting on actual jobs created? Ah, this is the magic of it. While there's not an explicit tie-in to jobs in our performance agreement, Amazon does have a jobs requirement with their state agreement. And in the event that Amazon would, I guess default is not the right word, but in the event... Yes that they would the miss their state targets, yeah. that would make them ineligible right. Right. for receiving our local targets. So while it's uh, specifically not called out for, it is in a de facto way tied into their meeting their jobs targets as well. Excellent. Um, it looks like we do have another question about Arlington projects, Arlington projects a net, e oh, sorry. <laughs> they're coming too quickly, hold on. You all are chat. You're all are typing too <laughs> fast. Yeah. Yeah. Arlington projects a net economic benefit of 32 million a year from HQ2. Fuller forecasts 26 million, and Fuller clearly underestimated the education. How do you explain these discrepancies? Um, so I'm not quite sure uh, about those numbers. I know no, no, our our no, reflection no, right. is 32 million at the peak. Right. of Amazon's build out and Stephen Fuller's projections, I thought were always significantly yeah. higher yeah. than ours were. So I'm not yeah. quite sure about that. Uh, we've actually yeah. estimated quite conservatively. Um, so as to make sure this is something uh, where the actual revenues realized would exceed expectations. So Arlington didn't assume a lot of macroeconomic factors that Stephen Fuller baked into his. So we'll, we'll try and get back to the chatter about the specifics of that. Yeah. But Super. Um, uh, I think that uh, that's it for TOT and transportation. So um, if you just, could, I just uh, have one, one logistical more? note. Um, for those of you on the phone, we will supply the slides and reporting. Great. So I guess we are going to move next to looking at education. Right. Isn't that next? Path of growth. Path of growth. 
What are we doing? Oh, oh, we didn't do this slide. The beautiful, colorful slide and the transportation improvements. Sorry about this. Yeah. So as you all look, uh, trying to get a, a visual sense, if you haven't been down to Crystal City, Pentagon City and Potomac Yards recently, uh, this is a representation of, of some of the uh, existing assets in place. Uh, the color coded color coding shows uh, all areas in blue are uh, properties that are owned by JGB Smith. They're the principal landowner in the area. And then the area in uh, orange. orange, red, those are future development sites also owned by JBG. The yellow, the yellow cross hatched areas are what Amazon is intending to purchase from JGB for redevelopment. And the area that's in solid yellow or gold are areas that Amazon will, on an interim basis, be leasing from uh, JBG. Or that's, I guess, where they're going to start, right? Yeah, that's where they're starting, yep. So that's the general lay of the land. Then you'll also see the areas in uh, black that are bounded, uh, bordered by uh, the, the orange color. Those are the transportation investments that are planned, the new metro entrance that you'll see on the... Uh, left side of the screen, that's Crystal City. Then there's um, on the right side of the screen, you'll see references to uh, a new pedestrian and bicycle connection uh, to the, the airport. So this would be a pretty innovative uh, infrastructure investment connecting a, an existing community to a major airport, something that is rare uh, in the United States, if it exists at all. And uh, the Route 1 improvements that Victor talked about to make that more of a, a boulevard road instead of, as you, you know it now, a pretty perilous, non-pedestrian friendly highway. And then off the map, but certainly not uh, insignificant, are investments in Potomac Yards in Alexandria, the, uh, the second metro entrance for the metro station, as well as the substantial innovation campus that Victor referred to before. So you look at this map, You'll see that uh, Amazon is planning on building a lot of facilities around, across and behind the Whole Foods on 12th Street in Pentagon City. And uh, I guess, is there anything else to say about that at this point? These are the, these are the parcels that are known as Penn Place and uh, Metropolitan Park, the remaining areas of that to be redeveloped. We've already got some uh, plans in place for an overall level of density that's consistent roughly with what Amazon is planning, even though there will be a community process to determine the appropriate land use uh, configurations for those sites. But generally, the level of density is roughly, uh, roughly planned for, even though the mixes are different. So we'll be going through processes with Amazon that look like many others, include meeting with the community, site plan review committees before ultimate hearings with the board to determine exactly what those facilities look like. I think you're um, heading to uh, education, but I wondered if there were any questions. Uh, we don't have any more questions coming in right now, but I wonder if there's something uh, related to the joint uh, commitments from Arlington and Alexandria on a host of issues. While you're talking about education, people can be thinking about that. So um, just, uh, Christine, if you can take us to the education slide. We touched a little bit about this, but we have a number of questions about it. So I think if you guys can talk. Uh, keep going, yeah. I think it's back, is it? Nope, you're still going forward. There. There you go. Yep. So there, we have a number of questions about this around how the tech pipeline might work, what the opportunities are for career training um, in tech ed, uh, especially to marginalized communities or people that need retrained. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Okay, it's a lot of topics in one look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to cover them all. First, let's go over the numbers real quick. So the state is going to invest a billion dollars directly into the talent pipeline and that talent pipeline will run from from community college all the way uh, to, to PhD and what that pipeline is for is for doubling the number of technical degrees um, and pro providing us really the talent for the future um, we're looking at taking that number up to like 25,000 more uh, uh, talented degreed um, individuals. And the way that that money is working is that it is a match requirement from a university, for example, with uh, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech um, is putting up uh, $250 million that will be matched by the state with another $250 million. 
um, for their tech campus, but their total tech campus development will be $1 billion, just that campus. Um, then George Mason University is going to be raising $125 million that they're going to match with a state $125 million. Um, and then um, University of Virginia and other schools are also looking at increasing the number of data scientists um, and people in data analytics. As a matter of fact, um, University of Virginia just got its largest um, gift um, direct uh, from one of its alumni, a $120 million gift, largest in history, um, for data scientists and data analytics. Um, and as many people know, the Darden School um, campus is now right um, in uh, downtown Roslyn, right here in Arlington. So we're very excited of having them as close neighbors, but also to see these MBA students also combine their degrees with um, data analytics and, um, and, um, and, and data science. So, and then on um, from K through 12, um, STEM education, there's going to be $50 million invested across the state. By the way, I mentioned uh, just a couple of investments. I mentioned the investment um, from Virginia Tech, is their match that they're putting together, GMU. But this, this is really a, um, an eligible um, investment for any university, state university um, across, the, uh, across the Commonwealth. So other universities are expected to join in. Um, on the K-12 education, that $50 million will be really used to develop teachers and, and STEM curriculum um, in the schools across the, the, the state. And then we are working with our local schools in order to figure out how we can get our students connected directly into these uh, new technical pipelines. Um, we have been working with um, Arlington Public Schools, Falls Church, um, and also Alexandria Public Schools. And we just started discussions on how we can integrate these students more into the um, what's going to happen at uh, the Virginia Tech campus, what's going to happen at the GMU uh, Tech campus. So um, I think the next slide is uh, covering uh, just kind of the impact overall by the numbers. Touched a little bit on this, but maybe walking through uh, for all the commissioners online, which we, we're almost up to 100 commissioners online. So. That's terrific. And this is really, uh, if you haven't been able to follow all the numbers, I know we've been going through a lot of information uh, pretty rapidly. This sort of gives you the, uh, the essential numbers to, to know. Total 34,000 jobs lost from Arlington over the course of the uh, 2000s. And while we've certainly had job growth in the county since then, we've had nothing significant enough to, to replace the amount of jobs that have been sucked out of Arlington. Uh, this will get us not all the way there, but it will be a big help. Uh, a key issue in our community's ability to be resilient is that the number of jobs are reflect the diversity of the economy. And uh, while Arlington uh, for decades was home to the federal government, and proudly so, we recognize that's not necessarily a growth industry. Uh, so diversification of the jobs that we have in our community is essential uh, not only for economic resilience, but to attract the, the kind of uh, people to live and work in our county that, um, you know, will contribute to the growth of the region. Then uh, when we look at the Crystal City sector plan, as well as our capital improvement plans, um, you know, both of which are predicated upon there being significant uh, investment and value created in the area, this gets us towards realizing a lot of those things uh, in the case of the sector plan at all, in the case of the CIP, much more quickly than we would potentially uh, do so otherwise. And, and Vic, you, maybe you can help me out. I thought it was 97% was a direct incentive to the company. Here we say 95. I, yeah. I, not, not a significant difference, but. 97 is with the joint. That's city of Alexandria. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. 95 plus or minus, uh, 97 <laughs> plus or minus of the direct incentives are two, uh, two, two am, uh, are two investments in us. Mm -hmm. And uh, significant among them is dealing with affordable housing, which I'll, I'll make a special note of in a little bit. And here, this is a uh, reflective of a conversation that we had uh, earlier with someone in the chat room about the calculation of additional local revenues that would be generated by the point at which Amazon is at full build out, and that number is 32 million, uh, could go a lot higher if Amazon brings higher jobs to the uh, to the table. And the, the methodology for how we calculate that um, is that available at the Amazon website? 
do we get into project assumptions based on this on the website? We can make that available. Yeah, yeah, let, we'll, yeah. we'll make sure that that's available so that the uh, commenter can make sure that everything is reconciled. And what this means overall, you know, these are the, the cumulative revenues, 174 million over 12 years, 342 over 16. And that creates uh, the ability, even though it's, um, you know, it's not all about revenues, but remember what these are used for. And that's to provide investments in our community to keep Arlington working well. Investments, new revenues available for our schools, for housing, for dealing with uh, the impacts of growth, the provision of open space, investments in the arts, all things that we are currently going through a process through our annual budget, where you'll see that we're making trade-offs, that we're making choices of where we're going to uh, pursue investments now, defer them later, cause uh, ask our community to pay more, to deliver certain levels of service. This provides a path for us to begin to, to think about how we can take care of all of the needs, and maybe even some of the wants, mm -hmm. with the increased revenue that comes on board. And then when you think about the overall uh, quality of the deal from Arlington's perspective uh, with these numbers that were uh, just mentioned, that provides a 14 to 1 return on the direct local investment uh, provided to Amazon. That's quite significant. Uh, it means that this deal is uh, carefully stewarding taxpayer resources in such a way to make sure that the return is overwhelmingly in favor of Arlington. So as you get into um, talking about the performance agreement, which uh, is our last topic of the evening, we also have some questions about clarifying the business tax di district um, and those, uh, you know, what that means maybe before you get into the uh, Performance agreement. The question is the, 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 the tax increment or the BPAL taxes? Well, I, I need some clarification there. It's, the question is please clarify the business tax district and why um, we offer Amazon uh, this reduction in taxes. Tax, is that tax, zone, tax zone. Tax zone. Yeah, I think that's our tax zone. Yeah. 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 Yes. So, go ahead. God, no, no. I was going to say generally uh, the tax zone incentive is something that Arlington has had on the books. I can't remember what year, but it's consistent ten years, with what? 10 years. 10 years. Ten years uh, most communities in the region have a similar uh, incentive on the books to attract uh, organizations that are involved specifically in the research and development of technology. So we're not just talking about people that have fancy gadgets, but that are actually producers in the tech uh, sector. Yeah, they're not just making websites. Right, they're not just <laughs> making websites. So That's true not tech companies. <laughs> Uh, so with that incentive, in order to encourage the uh, penetration of those companies in Arlington, uh, previous county boards uh, established this uh, tech zone, which would exempt them on a sliding scale, um, depending on criteria being met from business professional occupancy and licensing taxes in Arlington. Um, it is yet to be known whether or not Amazon is oh, going to qualify yeah. For this, they haven't yet determined what business units are going to locate here. But uh, first of all, you need to know that in none of the numbers that we quoted before was it assumed that those taxes would be realized. We kept them out because there are many reasons why a company might not be eligible for it, whether they're Amazon or not. So um, the BPAL taxes are not a part of the return on investment. And the determination of whether or not Amazon will, will be eligible is subject to, A, what businesses they decide, uh, business units they decide to locate here. Then they have to apply, and then they have to be granted the uh, relief from BPAL taxes right. from the Commissioner of Revenue. Right. So that's the process, not something that Arlington created to Amazon, not anything that we could promise to Amazon. And it's available to all businesses who meet the criteria. Thank you. Um, one more question before we get to performance. Uh, the performance agreement is the big um, elephant in the room that I know everyone wants to hear about. We did have a question about art and entertainment. If there's any you know, opportunity with Amazon coming to, I think you talked earlier, this person was a little late about you know, Crystal City and what that might look like. Is there any, in terms of entertainment down there, Victor? Uh, a couple things. I mean, you know, one, question? they're, they're, 
things in, in the redevelop, redevelopment pipeline, such as a uh, pretty innovative theater that's coming to Crystal City already, uh, then the way I, I would think about it, imagine the economic activity that will come from 25,000 new people who bring a new energy to a community. Uh, whether it's going to be, I don't think it's a question of whether it's going to be arts or whether it's going to be retail or whether it's going to be restaurants. It's going to be all of that, all of that and more stuff that we don't even imagine. So, um, I mean, yes, right. this is the this is the way you get that stuff happening in a community. So, uh, so if, if we can move to the performance agreement, um, since uh, that's coming before you and the board. So this March uh, 16th, Saturday, four days from now, five days from now, this is when the board takes up this issue at long last. And um, it is strictly going to be a conversation about the performance agreement, the terms of which we've already described in this webinar. It is the estimated value of the transient occupancy tax increment. Um, and it is also the investment in tax increment financing that we are specifically promising to continue uh, if Amazon meets its performance targets. Again, that's what we do currently. We're just committing in this agreement to continue doing it as long as Amazon performs. Uh, so those will be the two structural items that are before the board uh, this upcoming Saturday. Just like any item that's ever before the board, we're going to have a little bit of a presentation where we go over what the it is, then we will have some comment from our advisory commissions that have dominion over this subject, in this case, the Economic Development Commission. And then we will have a public hearing where anyone from the public uh, will be invited to speak on the issue. It is important to note, if you count yourself as one of them, we're doing advanced signups for this uh, due to the expected large number of uh, people wanting to speak. So if you do want to speak, we encourage you to uh, go to the board webpage and sign up in advance. It'll, it'll first of all mean you'll have a much more predictable day ahead of you, uh, but it will also help us out with managing the crowds uh, during that day. But the, the full uh, details of what we're gonna be considering are on the screen right now, and it outlines what we told you before. This is all about performance. Amazon isn't given anything on a speculative nature, not based on a promise, not based on a handshake, it's all based on whether or not they perform according to the agreement's targets. And in the event that they don't, they don't receive a direct incentive for Arlington. And in the event that they do, remember, it is a, an increment of the growth in a tax that um, if it doesn't grow, they can't receive it. So we have a couple questions coming in. Um, one is uh, specific to... Um, the $32 million benefit, um, does that include meals and sales tax? Yes, that does. Just curious. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. From the, yes. the employees. Right, yes. from the 25,000 employees that we're expecting to come here. Yes. It doesn't include a speculation of, of other thousands jobs. of other jobs yeah. that may come. Yeah. Um, there's also a question about housing and, you know, a lot of concern about housing in the, in the region mm -hmm. and what that means with, you know, more people coming here and inflation. And maybe uh, one of you could talk a little bit about, you know, kind of some things happening in the housing world here in Arlington sure. or in the region. So as part of this, uh, Mr. Hoskins talked about the $15 million annually that Arlington and Alexandria are going to make sure are available to deal with impacts of HQ2. And that's uh, directing our, our current resources towards a policy of, of providing housing um, in the area. Then there's also a uh, state promise to provide $15 million to mitigate $15 million a year um, to mitigate the impacts of HQ2. Still working on the details of what that's going to look like, uh, but we're trying to shape that to be a, a tool that provides flexibility that we don't have right now to meet needs, whether they uh, occur very quickly and suddenly beyond the pace that governments are used to operating and or to provide different levels of affordability for projects that may be hard to fund otherwise. Uh, so those are two things that are happening as a part of this combined. Yeah. That's uh, $30 million a year. Uh, a year in housing devoted to this. And then this is also in the space of a regional effort to not only look at what can be done to grow the housing supply without the investment of, of capital dollars, 
as well as the private sector getting involved with thinking about how uh, it can use its resources to promote the preservation of affordable housing. So there's lots of uh, exciting ideas and resources attached to meeting the housing needs of a region that has historically not been able to keep up. Um, we have a question, questions not related to the performance agreement at this point, but um, things that people are interested in. The first is the consideration uh, related to Route 1 and access from uh, National Airport to Route 1. Can we say anything at this point about that? Um, not, not really, yeah. because what, what, what's going on right now is it's going to be studied first. Um, there are some sections, um, there's some ramps that are being taken down right now um, by our Department of Transportation team here in Arlington County, and those are the ones that we control. But in terms of the, the Route 1, it's going to be studied first, and the, the thought is that portions of it will be, be taken down. When that work is done, I am sure that they will also be modeling how does that impact traffic to the airport. Then there will be the bridge to the airport, um, and that bridge to the airport will hopefully relieve some um, some car trips, and people can actually walk, you know, from this side of the tracks um, um, to the airport, as opposed to going into the complex of, of the uh, airport. Um, I think we've covered almost every question uh, in here, but we do have, uh, um, you know, you talked a little bit about housing, and but anything related to low income housing and middle income and missing middle and all of that that you might talk to a little bit? Yeah, so the, so the funds from um, Arlington County um, are probably going to be focused on, as, as always, uh, affordable housing, because that's that's what we, we are really concerned about. Um, the funds from Alexandria are going to be a combination of um, affordable housing uh, and missing middle, um, which is where a lot of people are these days. Um, and the state funds will probably uh, focus on a combination of affordable and missing middle. There's the, um, the idea behind the uh, JBG Washington Initiative Housing Fund. That one is really focused on preservation, um, mostly. And um, there's a question, you know, uh, from Kevin Yam about the incentive agreement appears to spell out mechanics for TOT and TIF, but wondering where the specifics are spelled out around the uh, 570 million infrastructure investments, where well, people can find that information. Yeah, that, that's actually on our website. And we'll we'll get everyone on the website. Yeah, and it's oh yeah, and it's in the CIP. Right. Yeah, these are already the Arlington's approved plans. Yeah. So uh, we'll 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 make sure that that gets to everyone. Um, yeah, I think. Have you seen any other questions come in that we haven't covered? Uh, I have a lot of really good um chatter going on here, and uh, I guess. Is it obnoxious? Christian uh, and Victor, I'll turn it over to you guys to just wrap up with what happens sure. next and uh, begin any straggling questions oh, in here. Go back to that. Oh, sure. there is, I'm sorry, one more question. Is there a um, you know, expectation that since Amazon canceled New York, would, that we would get more than 25,000 jobs just came in? So we have been, we've been told that um, what they're looking at is there are other 17 locations around the country and uh, they actually expect to move a lot of those jobs to those locations. That doesn't impact the 25,000 that are um, planned to be here um, or the additional um, up to 37,850 could possibly be here. So I think you touched on this earlier, but it was kind of quick. So maybe we just go back to a couple of these questions about hiring people from marginalized, the, the, the term in the chat box is marginalized community, <laughs> underrepresented communities. Sure. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that, touch on that again? So I think it's important to note, uh, and Amazon has said this directly, uh, you know, 25,000 jobs in a, a corporate headquarters would likely mean 12,000 jobs or so that are require spec uh, uh, excuse me, niche credentials mm -hmm. in technical skills. technical skills. Then the rest of the jobs would be a combination of what you'd see in any corporate headquarters, uh, administrative assistants, marketing professionals, paralegals, human resources, communications, kinds, all kinds of jobs that are available for people with less specialized education, which provides a great opportunity for um, people who may not necessarily have the, the tech background, but who have some levels of education that may be suitable for what will amount to about 12,000 new jobs, uh, 12,000 at least, over the course of the performance period, period, which could be available to people who are ascribe, uh, aspiring 
to get more secure middle class employment, who may be currently uh, making ends meet through multiple gig jobs, who can focus on a career pathway. This is this is the path for people who may not necessarily because of how our economy works or life circumstances been able to get those very special credentials that uh, half of these jobs are going to require. But that means half are going to give them opportunities that didn't exist otherwise. And a lot of this is being tried out already at uh, Northern Virginia Community College. The Northern Virginia Community College has a program that they're working directly with um, people to get them credentials as opposed to get them a complete degree. Like the credential quality the credentials qualify them for a specific job in the organization. And uh, Amazon has been part of this, particularly working with veterans. Um, so I think that this model can be expanded. Um, we actually are talking to uh, Washington, D.C., Prince George's County, Montgomery County, about a regional workforce effort. We also have another question regarding property values and property taxes. Uh, James Ruff asks, as property values rise, so will property taxes. Are there any plans to hold seniors harmless from this process? Okay. So, you know, one of the great things about this is the pressure that we currently have uh, on residential taxpayers where you're dealing with property values rising, but you're not leaving your home. Therefore, that provides no immediate value to you. Um, and the commercial sector that's underperforming is that the increasing share of funding Arlington is borne by residential taxpayers. This model, where we're able to get uh, growth in the commercial sector, and even with a rise in property values, creates the precondition for us to actually lower taxes. You know, then our conversation as a community is not about how do we raise revenue to meet our to meet our basic needs, but we're looking at excess revenue where we can determine how to prioritize whether to invest in new things or to return money. To, uh, to taxpayers. So that's the, that's the model that this provides us. And so holding harmless, if I think I understand you correctly, is how do we create the ability that um, rising, rising values don't hurt people where they're most vulnerable. And this is how you do that by creating the revenues that, that better exceed your needs. So there's some, there's some, uh, some discussion going on relative to kind of uh, workforce diversity and workforce, um, you know, in Maryland or uh, MGM Graham, uh, I don't know if that's Maryland or the district. Uh, Maryland. There was some Maryland. some efforts to hire underrepresented communities. Mm -hmm. um, there's some concern in the chat box about, you know, diversity in the pipeline, you know, whether that's people with disabilities or uh, diverse races or women or low income. And just wondering, you know, what what if we know of anything that Amazon is planning in that regard? Well, so, I, I mentioned I mentioned earlier that um, we are we the economic development um, directors, uh, the deputy mayor of, of economic development for D.C., myself, Prince George's County and Montgomery County. We're going to be meeting um, at the end of March and early April to start talking about how do we do a regional strategy for employment and training for underserved communities. So that is going to be our target. And Amazon is in that conversation with us. So, yes, they are involved, but we want to bring other companies in because Amazon's not the only solution. We need to bring in the Googles, the Facebooks. We need to bring in some of our cyber companies. We really need to make this more than just one company uh, helping us make this change. That's great. Well, I think we're coming to the end of our hour. I was wondering if either of you might take a minute and just uh, about next steps and what, what happens next and where do we go from here? Saturday. That's when we do the performance <laughs> agreement. But then the, thereafter, a lot of the questions that we've seen that we haven't been able to get to, like how is Amazon going to relate to the community? Um, what's it going to look like with people who work on developing, uh, who building, constructing the project and people who work there and specific ideas for how to uh, involve and provide pathways for people who may be underemployed or, or who may be marginalized out of the current economy. These will be ongoing conversations, uh, particularly uh, with the Arlington Way. Um, the biggest uh, community conversation about benefits and those kinds of things that come from development are associated with a development proposal itself. And believe it or not, even though we've been talking about Amazon for 120 days, there is no development proposal that we actually have for their facilities. So we look very much forward 
uh, to that happening so that we can begin to have some of these other community benefits become more concrete. Uh, the other thing that I just feel like I should say, some of the questions that we've had are best addressed by Amazon itself as a company and their practices and plans. And there is a link to uh, some web resources that they've provided to answer some frequently asked questions about this project, as well as a link to a company blog about how they operate. If you go to arlingtonva.us slash Amazon, you will find a link to that. And it's better to hear from them directly than us trying to reflect and represent what we've heard. And there's an email where you can ask Amazon any other question that you don't see reflected there. Super. Um, Victor, any closing remarks or thoughts? Well, um, you know, four years ago, the vacancy rate was above 20 percent. And actually it was like 27 percent, I think, in Crystal City. Yeah. Um, it was really bad. And over the last four years, we've managed um to do, uh, there have been about 248 transactions. We've only provided incentives to 18 of those with the, the great fiduciary oversight of the board. Um, and actually only and five of those were less, $60,000 or less. So it's not it's not like we have been doing every company here a lot, but it, it that's really not where the action is. The action is really repositioning ourselves. And we've done that. We continue to do that. We're at seventeen point two percent. We really need to get around down around ten percent. Oh yeah, 12, ten to twelve percent. That's the target. Let's go single digits. Let's take, make it happen. It's going to take about four years to get okay. there. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so we have come to the end of our webinar. We want to thank all of our commissioners and advisory group members for joining us tonight. Um, we've had an excellent conversation. We hope that we've clarified a lot of things for you. Just a reminder, you can go to arlingtonva.us backslash Amazon for more information. And have a great evening.